Hi, Caleb with Brown Nose here. Today I'm joined with Craig from Area 419 and we are gonna be diving in to the Zero Reloading Press. Take us through it. So this is our Zero. We've got a broken down model that we can talk to a talk through a little bit as well as a complete product. The, gen the genesis of the Zero Reloading Press is spending a lot of time as a reloader. Uh, Area 419 is built around precision products for pr the precision rifle community. And part of being a precision rifle shooter is being a reloader. Right. And having loaded thousands and thousands of rounds on all of the popular presses on the market. We thought, we like little things about all of these, but there's not one that we think does it all well. Uh, and there is the, the beginning of the design here. We also realized in the design process that everything on the market really and truly is a small iteration of things that have been being done for 60 or more years. Uh, and are built around dies that haven't really changed since the 7814 dies started in the in the 40s. You know, RCBS, their very first dies in the early 40s were 7814. Uh, Redding also in the 40s, they were the same way. And there hasn't been a big look into how are we maintaining the consistency from not just stroke to stroke in reloading, but from lot to lot, from session to session, uh, in a way that can can truly be precise, can truly be the same and a long way down the rabbit hole, the Zero is born. Yeah, and I mean, reloading has come such a long way from that time, it only makes sense that the presses need to get there. Yeah, the, it, the brass that we're using, the powders that we're using, right. the bullets we're using, the dyes that we're using, they're all so much further forward than they were in the late 60s when you had you know, Bonanza design the coax press. I mean, that, that's one of the more recent designs that you'll find on reloading benches today. And we thought it was time that the press itself, the thing that is managing and applying force and allowing specifically sizing and forming processes to take place, it was time for that to take that leap forward as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, diving into it, let's start from the top. And first thing I notice, obviously, my reloading dies are going to fit in this. Yeah. So a lot of people look at this and think, well, it's a turret press. Mm -hmm. And the bad rap that turret presses have gotten for years is that there is a a wobble in right. the turret that allows that turret to rotate like you want it to. Uh, that was obviously a problem that we had with the turret press that we've reloaded many thousands of rounds on. But we looked to our manufacturing background, our manufacturing core, and said, how can we have something that releases and locks up in a repeatable manner, in a solid manner, and can let us build a turret press that doesn't require you to reset dies in a way that is also very, very solid. So what we got to is what's considered in the manufacturing world a zero point retention system that is built around a pull stud that uses a matching male taper and female taper, and this is the wedge that's in the side of the press here, to grab that turret, that pull stud, and pull it down and lock it in place. And when this thing is, when this thing is locked, you have no movement in the head. So we have the stability of a single stage platform and that the dies aren't going anywhere, there's no wiggle or play in the turret head, but we've also got the utility of a turret press that doesn't require you to reset dies. Resetting dies is an inherently inconsistent process because of the nature of all of these being a large coarse thread, class two thread. Right. Um, resetting dies is a great way to find inconsistency, so we don't want you to have to. Set up your dies, leave them in, and what we know we can do is remove this turret and replace this turret and have a more repeatable position and more repeatable alignment than you possibly could by removing the die. So the, the core of the system is allowing you to set up a die in a turret, leave the die in the turret, and know that you can move from position to position or from turret to turret with a great deal of repeatability and consistency. Yeah, because every turret press that I've used, including my favorite one that I'm currently using, whenever I'm sizing, there's a little bit of wobble, and that's obviously not gonna happen with the zero point system. Yeah, we, we've got the ability to lock that turret down into the body of the press in a manner that, that gives you absolute rigidity. So you can clock from position to position, tighten down the system with supplied torque key, and you know that that sizing die is exactly where it was, or very, very close to exactly where it was the last time you used it within about a half a thousand. Oh, wow and it's not going anywhere, it's yeah. solid, and you're going to have an amount of security and rigidity in this press that is equal to or greater than what's common in a single stage press. Okay, yeah, and you know, moving down from there, looking at it, 
most of the American made presses I see, it's obvious that they were cast. It's mm -hmm. obvious that this one was not cast. So this is American plate aluminum that has been machined in a, the body of this press is done in a single part, single operation, where we lock this thing into a fifth axis machining center. And from grabbing it on the back, we can machine all surfaces on the outside of the body, which gives us the ability to hold positional accuracy on certain, certain bearing surfaces that need to be in line for the linkage system to be both correct in, in, in where everything lines up, as well as smooth and aligned with itself. It's gonna give you the feel and the function of the system that, that nothing else can, can really compare to. Yeah, and I mean, that's obvious just by looking at it. I mean, this thing is a machinist dream as far as the machining quality goes on it. It's, it's phenomenal as far as that goes. And looking at all the holes and everything, it's obvious that the bolts themselves are not your generic off-the-shelf bolts. We took this so far, so we, we take great pride in the fact that this is American raw material that's mm -hmm. manufactured in the U.S. And we wanted everything to be perfect. And that went all the way to the point of, we're even manufacturing our own steel shoulder bolts so that we can maintain certain amounts of crush and pressure on the, uh, on the roller and ball bearings that capture this system. So we have a very low friction linkage system that's also a very low slop. Right. It's only attainable because we went to the depths of making sure that every single part was made to work specifically with every single part. Uh, holding tolerances that allow the things to work that they do, that work the way that they do, and, and there's no parallel to it, and, and definitely nothing surpassing it on the market. Yeah, and I mean, that's obvious. Just, I know like video and pictures don't do it justice, but there is absolutely zero slop in this. It only moves in the direction it's supposed to move. Yes, every, everything is, is captured and pressed and pulled together in a way that, that gives us a feel that we obviously can't really can't really express in video, but it's it's unlike anything else. And when, when we get out in extension, there's no wobble in the system. Mm -hmm. Everything is aligned, it's tight, it's the way that it should be. And that translates to a very consistent positional accuracy. So when we run that ram up, we've got 4.4 inches of ram stroke. And when you get to the top at 4.4, we have an, an angular, you know, we, we want everything to be square and we want it to be in exactly the same place. And that gives us an angular and a, a spatial repeatability at the top of the stroke. That is, that is unmatched. Yeah, and I think that the key word here is tolerance. Mm -hmm. And going from that as well, I noticed that there's no cam over. No, there's not. So it, most presses are built on, especially the RAM ones, they're all built on a four bar linkage system. And it is a system that creates advantage, mechanical advantage as you move closer and closer to what's called the zero point in a, in a four bar linkage. And that's when your your two points on the ends of the arms, as well as the point at the base of the ram and the linkage, get closer to an align. When you get to that zero point, you have what is basically an infinite mechanical advantage. Uh, we stop the press just short of that because cam over systems will typically push and pull and push and pull on that brass in a, in a very mechanically advantaged and fast manner. Uh, that's, that's not the best way to size brass. Uh, because that, that forming operation needs to be consistent, it needs to be deliberate, right. and having a cam over that moves back and forth and back and forth in the way that it does is, is not optimal. So we've designed the system around getting you all the way to the precipice so you have a great amount of mechanical advantage when you're sizing, but not getting to that point that it can become detrimental. Uh, and we, we've taken that thought all the way through, not only giving you a very rigid, very strong press, but one that's built all the way around sizing things and, and managing what you're doing with the press uh, in a specific and purpose-built way. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense. And I can't help but notice there's a tray at the bottom. I'm assuming that's a primer tray. One of our gripes about, uh, oh, okay. about reloading presses, we don't, we don't like um, surgical hosing and baby jars and things like yeah. that hanging off of the press. So mm -hmm. what we've built is a decapping system where as you decap, the primers will drop down through a hole in the back of the ram and they will align with a hole in the body of the press. And when you decap, they fall through the press into a nice little tray that you can dump out. It's not, not hanging off of anything. It's not gonna fall apart. Uh, it's just a little thing that is different about the system that it solves one of the gripes that we personally had. Yeah, and that's a little thing, but in my opinion, that's gonna keep a lot of stuff off my floor. 
Um, and yeah, I see that as a huge advantage. That's my reloading bench tends to be a little bit of a disaster anyway. So anything that we can do to keep <laughs> the system together and keep it con contained is is going to lead to a, a better overall experience in reloading room. Yeah, and that's such a small thing, but it's just kind of blowing my mind. Uh, it's weird that how that part's <laughs> doing it. Um, but let's let's move on to the actual handle itself. All right, so this is one we get a lot of questions about. People want. A, a roller ball like they might find on their Dillon, the big roller handle. Mm -hmm. What we know about roller handles is for them to work ergonomically, they need to they need to be stroking in line with your ram. And that what that means is you either have to have that handle far offset from the press from the from the ram, which is going to create some odd forces, or you have to bend the handle. Uh, this handle is made out of solid steel. It's very heavy. It's very strong. It's been nitrided to be very hard. We didn't want to bend this for, for obvious reasons. Sure. Uh, so knowing that that stroke is going to come from closer to the center of the ram, it's going to be off at a little bit of an angle. It's very ergonomic, and it's John's favorite part of the system that our handle spins on a on a captured needle bearing. And as you run through that stroke, it's it's something that we've designed to be very ergonomic, sit in the palm of your hand, and over long sizing or seating or decapping operations, you're going to get just a level of comfort that's that's different from anything else. Yeah, and everything from the you know positive indexing of the turret itself all the way down to the primer trade that's still blowing my mind, there's obviously a lot of innovation and, and problem solving that went into this. We became obsessed with positional repeatability. Okay. And if you look at the press, there are some things that go into this that can be easily looked past. The idea that we are manufacturing drill bushings mm -hmm. to work with the ball bearings and give us a rotational repeatability that's got a very, very small tolerance. So with all of that being said, it's no secret that this is obviously going to be more expensive than your average reloading press. It is. The press retail price point is $1,200. Okay. And it, it allows us to, at that price point, and when a machinist gets a hold of this or somebody that manufactures gets a hold of it, they're going to say, we've had people say, how did you do this at $1,200? Um, we've pulled in a lot of parts and pieces and consistency-driven items that that don't exist elsewhere. One of them that we talk about is the parts that we put into positional accuracy of the turret. So we've manufactured drill bushings that have what is a, an effectively zero clearance between the ball bearing and the press body that when you are working the positive detent is going to give you a rotational positional repeatability that's in incredibly tight. Uh, we've also made, we've taken tool steel, hardened it, turned it to size, nitrided and press fit into the body, something that has between this, this bushing and the outside diameter of these pull studs less than a thousandth of diametric clearance, meaning that when you, when you couple together the rotational repeatability and you couple the ability of the press body to keep the turret itself on center and then the centering nature of the zero point system and the the male and female tapers, we can have this turret move and stay in a place that is uh, that is more repeatable than you could possibly be resetting dies. We've also gone so far as to find things from the industrial manufacturing world, like the bearing that guides the that guides the ram. It is a PTFE lined bearing, and PTFE, uh, a common trade name for this, is like Teflon. Right. And every time you run that RAM, you are getting a microscopic amount of that PTFE that wears off onto the RAM and lubricates it so that the system stays incredibly smooth, it's oil-free, it's not messy, it's not something that you're going to constantly be wondering, do I need to grease this thing or why is it squeaking at me? Uh, the, the components that are in here and are being built into this are so far past anything else that, that is on the market that while the price point is higher, you're you're getting what you're paying for there. Yeah, and Craig, I want to thank you for joining us and going over this with us. This has been extremely informative, and I love sitting down, especially with companies making innovative yeah. products like this, and just going over the nitty gritty of, of how they made it. Yeah, and this is something that from the very initial conversation of what's going on with that, with presses, what do we like, what do we don't like, all the way to uh, you know this this major round of them, we're shipping pallets of them all over the world. It's a really exciting thing and something that I think is going to push what's happening on reloading benches from a technological advancement standpoint for, for years to come. And we're 
we're proud to have this in Reloader's hands. Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. And I can't wait to see what we have next. So y'all stay tuned. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.